morning, and um, I thank you, and our group really wants to uh, extend our appreciation for being able to share the work that we've done uh, with this group. Also would like to acknowledge the support of the NIH, the National Institute for Nursing Research, and an interdisciplinary team of investigators who contributed largely to the study. And I should say at this point also to the women who were newly diagnosed with breast cancer and facing treatment and who were willing to get into a scanner uh, to do uh, testing and to, in an uh, uh, effort. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, um, who were willing to get into the scanner to help other women in the future. First, uh, just a very brief background. For a long time now, women treated for breast cancer have reported problems, cognitive problems in thinking and remembering things, carrying out their daily tasks and jobs, and they've attributed these problems to chemotherapy. So this has received the label of chemo brain. And there is a body of research that shows that cognitive changes do occur in some women treated with chemotherapy. But despite considerable research effort up to this point, the problem still remains unexplained and there are no current therapies. So why we uh, want to study this, the importance of it, first of all is that research findings of the prevalence and severity of cognitive deficits with chemotherapy are mixed. So in a latest review of um, 26 prospective studies using neurocognitive measures, 69 percent have shown evidence of some decline in uh, women, cognitive decline in women treated uh, with adjuvant chemotherapy for breast cancer. And the prevalence has varied widely from 17 percent to 78 percent, very wide variation. And Importantly, our work and the work of others has shown that cognitive complaints and deficits have occurred even before chemotherapy. So these could not be attributed to chemotherapy, but the reason was not known. And it's important, we believe, to find solutions because even subtle cognitive changes can have considerable negative impact on a person's functioning and their quality of life. And further, patients' concern over chemo brain may result in a reluctance to accept life-saving therapy. So the question is, how is fatigue linked to cognitive function? Well, first of all, as you may know, the problem of cancer-related fatigue is widespread. And in women treated for breast cancer, the prevalence is reported from 56 percent to 95 percent. That's high during and following adjuvant chemotherapy. Fatigue is a complex biological psychological phenomenon, and fatigue and reduced cognitive function can often occur in a downward spiral over time. So our earlier findings showed that worry interfered with the ability to do a working memory task in the scanner in patient groups before any adjuvant treatment. Worry was related to self-reports of fatigue, and so we hypothesize that fatigue, often linked to worry and anxiety, might contribute to cognitive problems over time. So we use functional magnetic resonance image, functional magnetic resonance imaging, to directly test brain function while a woman was performing a working memory task in the scanner before any adjuvant treatment, and then one month after adjuvant treatment. Now, this was before the start of any subsequent radiation therapy or endocrine therapy. Women then provided self-reports of cognitive function, how they felt they were functioning, and levels of fatigue after each scan. And we made comparisons with two groups, a group of patients treated with radiotherapy but no chemotherapy for breast cancer, and aged matched healthy controls without breast cancer. So this is a slide of, of our most important findings. And if you look at the blue air, the area that's outlined in blue, uh, this is an area of the prefrontal cortex called the left inferior frontal gyrus that's uh, critical for performance of a work working memory task um, effectively, and since this was our region of interest. 
And before treatment, so before women had had any adjuvant chemotherapy, they showed reduced function in the frontal regions needed to perform this working memory task. And this occurred in both patient groups versus controls. But I have the arrow there to show, I think you can tell that the chemotherapy group actually had the lowest level, this is pre-chemotherapy, had the lowest level of activation, and the radiation therapy group fell in between the, the controls and the pre-chemotherapy group. Further, women who were not able to activate or were less able to activate the frontal brain regions needed to do this task before treatment suffered greater fatigue over time, regardless of the treatment. So this low function before treatment predicted severity of fatigue later on. Also, interestingly, women awaiting uh, chemotherapy were more worried and they were more fatigued and they scored significantly higher on these measures than the controls. And again, the radiation therapy group also experienced these problems, but their scores fell in between. And across all groups, greater fatigue was associated with poor test performance and more reported cognitive problems over time. Now, Dr. Osborne, I forgot, and I think people have the abstract, but there were 97 participants to say that there were. There were 28 women who were in the chemotherapy group, 37 in the radiation group, and uh, 32 in the healthy controls. So this suggests some clinical implications. Uh, first of all, we believe there's a need for increased clinical awareness that cognitive problems can begin before any adjuvant treatment. And secondly, an increased awareness that women awaiting chemotherapy are more vulnerable to cognitive problems related to worry and fatigue. And that work needs to be done so that there might be earlier identification of women greater, at greater risk because early cognitive problems can become worse over time. And this is a strong argument in our estimation for early intervention before the start of adjuvant treatment. So the key things, I think, uh, the bottom line is that first of all, we believe chemo brain may not be an appropriate label for cancer-related mm -hmm. cognitive dysfunction because there are likely other sources that contribute to the problem or produce problems that wouldn't exist otherwise. That such factors as pretreatment, altered neural activation, and fatigue can contribute to cognitive problems, and that existing interventions to reduce stress and fatigue may alleviate the neurocognitive problems over the course of breast cancer treatment. Thank you.